So I wanted to welcome today Tina Stinson, who is a former client of mine and has moved to Charlotte, North Carolina and is living a life where she's running her business and growing her business. And today she's going to tell you how she did it and where she, what, what it looks like for her. So Tina, thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very <laughs> excited. It's great to see you too. It's so good to see you too. I miss you. I know. <clears throat> so tell me about, tell me first your title and what your business is. So um, my business is called Healthy Balanced Living, and my main focus is helping busy women heal their bodies with a plant-based whole food diet and thrive. Mm. And I also always add an aspect of um, self-care, stress relief, and mindset, because if you want to have any kind of success, you have to have those um, those three things in the loop when you're trying to heal yourself. Or Mind be, and body. Be healthy, Yeah. Okay. So tell us one of the most important things that clients don't always understand when they come to start working with a coach is why it's so important to have an ideal client identified. Who is your ideal client and how do you help her? So my ideal client is a, a busy woman. Okay. And I really want to empower them and show them that they can take control of their health and and I want to simplify it for them and make it easy and so that they could take care of themselves because women are so busy taking care of everybody else. They don't take care of themselves. They don't do any type of self-care. They work themselves into the ground. And it's very difficult to, you know, stay on a healthy diet and then um, keep your family on a healthy diet at the same time. And so my goal is to really empower them and show them that it's really not that hard. Um, and I, I also like to teach women who are having any type of like um, inflammation issues is that's something it's something they can take into their own hands um, you know they could there's many things that they could do in combination with uh, working with a healthcare practitioner of some mm -hmm. sort um, there's many things that they can do to help improve the inflammation and it's really meant to empower them and give them some kind of control so they could feel like they can change their own lives and they don't have to count on pills or mm -hmm. you know, uh, a doctor that they don't connect with or something like that. Okay. So you want to work with busy women who are struggling with their body and their health in some way and they want to take back the power for themselves. And you knew that when you and I met. So you had, and you, you knew you were a health coach, you had all your training, you had your certifications when we started. So why did you seek out working with a business coach at that point? I wanted to create a, a program, an online program, um, and also uh, possibly, and you know this, like a, just um, it could be a live program, a one-on-one -on -one program. But basically, I wanted to create a program outline that I to to serve the person, and it had to be in a certain order, and it had to be organized. And I was just not organized. Everything I had all these great ideas. It was all over the place. Mm -hmm. I had like a million composition notebooks with notes in it, and I still do that. You know, like that's just how my brain works. And mm -hmm. I just write everything down, and I'm like, oh, where's uh, book number thirty two? Like, you know, like <laughs> so, um, organizing my thoughts was it was just not happening. And so I was kind of in a standstill. And I couldn't move forward. And I think what you also run into a lot of times is um, just having the confidence, knowing you're going in the right direction. Yeah. So at that time, um, and I feel differently now, but at that time, I really just didn't have that confidence. I was like, is this what I'm supposed to do? Or mm. is this what I'm supposed to do? You know, so that was mainly what I was looking for was some uh, guidance on how to organize a, a workshop, a class, or, you know, right. teach people. So you were kind of spinning around, like second guessing yourself, knowing that you had a great concept, knowing that you were really great at what you do, but you just felt like you kind of couldn't get out of the spin and like move forward. Yeah, I just couldn't put it all together. I couldn't yeah. organize it. I hear that a lot because creative women, they don't always like work in a linear way mm -hmm. and sometimes it gets mushy for them and they're just like, I, I know it, I can see it in my brain, I just can't get there myself. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. And it's just uh, uh, organizing it in a fashion where um, you can get someone from point A to point B and do it the right way so it's easy for them, understandable, not overwhelming. It's, right. it's, it can be hard. Even if you did it yourself, it still can be hard to do. 
totally. Cause it's, there's so much like flying through your brain. So you wanted to be more organized. You wanted to take action. You wanted to stop second guessing yourself and you kind of just wanted to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. So what solution did you get for that current pro that problem that you had? That was last summer we worked together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you helped me quite a bit. We got everything organized and down on paper. Yeah. And, um, it was, and it also, not only did I get my ideas onto paper and organized, but it also taught me how to do it so that I can do it again. I can do it over and over and over again whenever I need to. And I, love that. I think your background as a teacher is very <laughs> helpful in doing stuff like that. And your brain is just works differently than mine. Mm -hmm. It's just very organized and spreadsheety. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me write it down in a book somewhere and then put it somewhere where I can't find it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was um, extremely helpful. And that, I think that's um, very important to know what your strengths are. And then when you don't have a strength, to find somebody who can help you with that. It's, uh, it's um, a lot less time consuming and you can get to where you go going quicker. It's really the best choice. One of the things I'm not hearing you say, and I want to make this clear for people, because I think people are afraid to work with a coach who's so different from them. So if I'm linear and you're more like circular and iterative, at no time did I make you have my way of doing things. Like we really figured out how to do something in a way that works for you. And I think yeah. that people are really nervous to work with somebody. They're like, oh, she's going to make me do X, Y, and Z, and I don't want to do it that way. Or she's going to make me, like, it's basically like I'm going to make people who are right-handed right with their left hand or something like yeah. that. Yeah. No, I want to make that. it clear that, that you're saying that you learned how to do this for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and also you shared a lot of your tools with me and some of them really clicked and then some of them didn't. So you take away what works for you or you yes. take what, what you're offering to me and I make it my own. And yes. so it works for me. And yes. it's just another person's point of view. Um, another person that thinks differently, I think is so powerful because, um, if you're always thinking the same way, you can't you can't create a course for someone who's exactly like yourself. Right. You have to create a course for more than one person. And so you've got you have to think of it in different ways. You have to you, know, you, you have did to a great job it. with that. You did a great job with that. You really were like you were like, this is the kind of person I work with, but I also might work with this person and I also might work with this person. And you had to create something that would work for everybody. And so you were so smart to seek out somebody else to bounce the ideas off of. Yeah, yeah, I, I felt like I had to. I was really, I was really stuck. And yeah. I knew I wouldn't be able to move forward or it would have taken me like another five years or something. You know? Oh my God, I hear that all the time. Yes. Yeah, people sit on an idea for so long and they think, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then before you know it, a whole year goes by and you haven't done a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is definitely a very important lesson. Um, and I'm getting so much better at that than I was when I worked with you. Um, I'm now I'm just like, I mean, I'm good at taking action, but um, I just don't even think about it anymore because uh, it's not that I don't care what people think and I don't care if I embarrass myself. I do, of course I care, but that's the only way to move forward. Like if you don't just do it, you're not going to learn how to do it. And so you just have to move forward. And, and if people laugh at you, they laugh at you. You know, like, mm. um, I can laugh at myself quite a bit. I've done some That's fun the videos. confidence, right? <laughs> like, that's the confidence right there. Like knowing you're not going to be perfect and some people are going to judge you and doing it anyway. Like it doesn't matter. Yes. I don't, I don't know. If, I'm not sure, but I don't think people want perfection. I think they really want to learn from someone who's real mm -hmm. and, there's, there's a part of me, like when I watch someone who appears perfect, I'm like, shut up, just like, <laughs> like you know, like, just okay. stop it, you know? Yes. Like, you, know, you, you love them and you hate them at the same time, like yeah. Amy Porterfield, I love her, but stop it, she's so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally feel the same way, I'm like, how can she be so perfect? How can she get so much done? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, you, in, you implemented so much so fast. And then I want to also point out, you implemented um, as a single mom, you implemented in the middle of, remember you had that horrible hamstring uh, oh, pull where yeah. you, you could not even move and you're a very active woman. 
Um, You moved out of your home, in with your dad, and then down to North Carolina. Like There was a lot of shit going on in your life, and you still implemented. And if you can implement during that kind of crap, you can do anything at any time. Yeah, I think that what really pushed me to do that was I spent so many years not doing anything and Mm -hmm. um, watching myself just sit still, Mm -hmm. you know, and so I think that I knew, and I knew that nothing was going to change. I mean, if you're a single mom, anybody who's a single mom knows that there's never a calm moment. Now, I have to say now that my kids are all out of the house Mm -hmm. and in college, and of course, it's so much easier, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's never going to be a good time. Like, you just have to do it, you know, every once in a while, like, they'll be like, all butterflies and rainbows. And it's like, ooh, it feels perfect. And it's like, bam, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it, it doesn't happen very often. Like if it does just like sit there and enjoy it for a moment, because it does happen sometimes. But um, yeah, I think, I think I got tired of watching myself just sit there and not do anything. I love that. I love that awareness. So let's talk about your results. What have you achieved? What did you change in your life? Um, So this is really interesting um, because the program that I originally created, I changed so much as you probably saw. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it was just me learning about myself and what I liked to teach. I was teaching, I was doing a few things, um, that uh, weren't in line with me completely. I thought they were. I really did think, I thought like the, uh, as an example, the, the workout aspect. Mm-hmm. I really thought I liked doing that because I had a Facebook group and I did these workout challenges and it was a lot of work. I did it for free and um, I love working out. You know that, I love running. I have, I just love it. Um, but what I learned is I hate teaching it. I don't, I don't want to be one of those badass, uh, you know, fitness coaches. It's just not me. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm very encouraging to other people. I'm fine with myself, but I don't think I'm, I'm not that, I'm not that energetic when it comes to like, okay, let's go and work out, let's do it. You know, I'm just not. And whenever I was making the videos for my program, my workout videos, which was funny because I had the torn hamstring, so so like lame, you know, it was like, oh my God. I don't know how you were doing that. It was amazing. <laughs> it was so bad. I would watch the videos and I'm like, oh my God. But I was like, I have to get this done. Like I said, like I just felt like I needed to move forward mm-hmm. and that was, I was doing what I needed to do. And if I had to change it later, I would change it later. So mm-hmm. that was my mindset behind it. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then I wasn't, I had everything completely finished and I wasn't launching. So mm-hmm. I was like, what is wrong with me? Why am I not doing this? Why am I afraid? Um, and I just kept asking myself the questions like, why am I not doing this? Why am I putting this off? Why am I not excited? Good questions. And I, and it was just, it was the whole workout thing. And that was going to be the most work out of everything because of the videos, it's right. a lot of work, it's editing, mm-hmm. um, it was, yeah, it was a lot, so, and I was like, I don't like it, um, why am I going to set myself up to do something every month that I don't like, because it was going to be a membership, so um, I just, I started paying attention to what, like, really lit me up, and what came easy, mm-hmm. and as you know, it's the, the plant-based whole food, the cooking, and stuff that just really comes so easy to me, mm-hmm. um, I love doing it, and so that's what I decided to focus on, so when I created the, the first program, it was a question I was answering for a lot of people that kept asking me, well, how do you do that, how do you transition to a plant-based whole food diet, how do you do this? And I wanted to make it an entry level program um, uh, that would lead into other programs that I would do in the future. And so that's what I did. It's basically a 30 day transition to a plant based diet with education. I made it simple and easy to follow and, um, and it's done and I'm going to start having people testing it. Okay. I'm going to have people go through it and test it for myself. Perfect. I'm just like going into that right now. And it's available. You could purchase it now. So that's like, the, that's my mentality again. Just put it out there. Yes. Um, it's, I'm sure it's not perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. Nothing but, is, right. But I want to have it available for people. And I want to, and then the test, having people test it is really just to see 
how easy it is to go through it. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? Is it understandable? Did you hate it? Was it boring? You know, those kind of things. I just want to see how people respond to it and have people that aren't afraid to tell me the truth (laughs) go through it. So, um, yeah. And I also decided to get certified in culinary nutrition, and then I upgraded it to be a certified instructor. So um, I can do all types of different classes in culinary nutrition. So I'm kind of like going one step further in what I seem to love, what really lights me up. Right, right, right. I love the awareness. I love the introspection. I love the lack of judgment of yourself. And I love that you just take action slowly, keep chipping away, keep chipping away, keep chipping away until it like kind of keeps revealing itself. I think that a lot of people forget, or maybe they just don't realize that like they have this dream in their head, like you did and like I did, like our program is going to be X. And what happens is the more that we do it and we learn about ourselves and we also learn about the people we like to work with, like it morphs and it changes and it becomes like it distills down more and the changing is not bad. It just, it, it makes us better at what we do. It makes us more authentic. I love that you've done all of that. That's so wonderful. I think that's just a part of it. I really do. Yeah. I mean, look at all the people that, you know, like some of the people that we follow, like um, I'm sure you follow some of the same people I follow. Sure. If you go back and you look at some of their first programs, like, um, Amy Porterfield, Lewis Howe, if you look at some of their first programs, they're super like, like basic, simple, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they still have them out there. They're mm-hmm. like, Hey, I put that out there. They still have them out there. Yes. And, but they're, they're so, they moved so much further ahead and their programs are so outstanding now. So you, you just, I love looking at that. I love yeah. looking at where people, um, that are really having a lot of success started and then where they are now and how long it took them, it doesn't happen overnight. And No, and I think, uh, I think if we can allow ourselves the grace that we don't have to do it overnight, and we don't have, every, but literally it's so trite, but everybody has to start someplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's really true, it doesn't yes. happen quick. You, it looks quick, because as soon as someone hits like that mark and they just get this success, it looks quick, but they've been doing it for like yes. 10 years most of the time, you know, yeah. working on it for a while. So true. So if you had to give somebody advice who's on the fence about, do I hire a coach? How do I know which coach to hire? Like what advice would you give to somebody? Um, I would always say hire a coach. I actually think that you should always be doing something learning. Like Mm -hmm. if you're not working with a coach, you should be in a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Um, You should be reading books. You should be listening to podcasts. You should always be learning uh, what what your specialty is in your field? Like I'm doing the culinary nutrition totally. training, and I'll after that. I I mean I have like four other classes I want to take. You know, so I'll just keep going, and it's not. Um, I I really enjoy it, so I love learning. But I I think that um, hiring the right coach, trying to find the right coach, is just by talking to them. Right. Um, I think it's necessary just to have a conversation like you and I did, and. I just kind of uh, clicked with you right away, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I don't know. I just, I just knew that we would work good together. I just kind of felt it. I think so. that's something that women get promised a lot is I can take you from zero to six figures in this amount of time, or your, your life is going to change 180 degrees in this amount of time. And I think if there's a coach promising that to you, that that's something that people should be like, whoa, because I think there's a lot of that out there. And that's why people are so resistant to working with a coach. But like you and I just had a conversation. I was like, where do you want to go? We can get you there. And, and it was iterative, right? Like, it's like, Mm -hmm. you go a little bit and then you figure it out and you come back and start again and you go a little bit and you come back and you. you Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think huge promises are, um, they're only worth as much as what you can do yourself. Like, so, you know, like if you're the type of person who, can um, create that much income on your own, then working with a coach is going to, yeah, then maybe you can get from six to seven figures. That's, mm-hmm. that's not me. I was not even close to being at that point. And someone right. to prom- if someone promised me that, I'd be like, okay, right, whatever. Right, so, right. Um, so I, you know, um, taking those small steps, getting from point A to point B, getting so- someone who's just getting started should just focus on that getting organized and getting yes. started, you know, yes. and 
um, just finding someone who you know that you could work with, who um, could work with your schedule, who you feel comfortable with. You have to be able to open up to them. You know, I talked to a few people um, before I started working with you. And I remember one girl was so like hardcore. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and she was also trying to sell me another coaching certification, which I didn't like. I was, oh. You know, and I was just like, okay, that's a little bit of a red flag. So I just, um, I would just, my, my suggestion would just be to talk to the person, mm -hmm. you know, that's, and interview several, right? Like you, you interviewed several before you decided yeah, you can get a good feel for it that way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And actually that's what you should do. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to, um, you know, hire the first person you meet because you have to spend time with them right. and, um, time and money, you know, right. uh, and you have to be able to work with them. So. Tina, thank you so much for all this information. I would love for people to be able to follow you, especially if your mission speaks to them about kind of transitioning into a more plant-based, healthy diet. How can people follow you? Uh, well, they could go to my website, which is my name, tinastenson.com. Mm -hmm. um, and they could follow me on Instagram at Healthy Balanced Living Coach, and Facebook is Healthy Balanced Living. Okay. So I'll make sure all of those, those links are there. Um, and I just really want to say thank you for investing time and money and energy into yourself. Thank you for the work that you do in the world because I know how important it is to you, but it also is important to the environment and to take care of the women that you serve. And then thank you for taking the time today to talk to me and helping other people know that they can have what they want. They just need to kind of get the right person to help them. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for having me. This My pleasure. Fun. Thank you.